I was only 19 when I had Aaron. Um, and I don't even mind saying this, he was an unplanned pregnancy, you know? So Billy and I, we had one decision to make. And I loved Billy, he loved me, and we got married. And about eight months later, we had a baby. I always knew Aaron was special. Um, we all did. Well, he had just an incredibly passionate heart for justice and righteousness. He was always the guy who took up for the underdog in every situation. Then came 9-11. A few months later, he came home on his 21st birthday. Yeah, you heard me right. He came home for dinner with us on his 21st birthday. <laughs> sat down across the table and he said, Mom and Dad, I stopped by the neighbor recruiter's office on the way home from work and I joined the SEAL Challenge program. And I was just struck with this weird mixture of awe and fear because now we were at war and uh, pride. You know, that just overrode all of it is just how proud I was of him. He decided very early on he wanted to be a Navy SEAL. One day we were out on the farm, Saturday afternoon. But this particular day, there was a news flash that came on. The Army Rangers had done something somewhere. He said, Dad, I think I want to be an Army Ranger. And he wasn't very old then. He wasn't even a teenager then. And I said, you know, there's one group that's uh, it's probably a little above the Army Rangers, you know. Well, what is that? And I said, you know, Navy SEALs told him about them. You know, I said, they do everything the Rangers do, but they also do it in the air and uh, in water, too, you know. And he started telling everybody he was going to be a Navy SEAL. By the time he was in middle school, it had become clear that he was a pretty tenacious football player. It was the Thursday before the first Friday night football game of his senior year. He had obliterated the anterior cruciate ligament in his left knee and had torn every other ligament. He rehabbed the knee. We went, we went and found the best surgeon possible. You know, a little bit of time went by, and just before school got out, he was playing a pickup game of basketball with some friends, and he came down wrong on the knee. He had obliterated the anterior cruciate ligament again. Went back in for the second surgery. The doctor came out about two hours in and said, Mr. and Mrs. Vaughn, there was nothing I could do. He said Aaron is gonna spend the rest of his life somewhat handicapped, and he'll never be able to do anything physical again without the use of a special brace. He was devastated. He was 17 years old, and he had had this dream all of his life about going into the SEAL Challenge program as soon as he graduated high school. He was just like, okay, this is who I am, and, and uh, I'm never gonna be a Navy SEAL. Obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Remember, 9-11 changed everybody in the nation, and it changed something in him that none of us were aware of. He came in to uh, supper that night and told his mom and I that he had joined the SEAL Challenge program. And then immediately I said, I said, son, you'll never make it, not with your knee like that. And you know, his response was, uh, Dad, if this is what God wants me to do, I'll be able to make it. And uh, I said, well, does the Navy know about your knee? <laughs> and he's like, oh no, or <laughs> they'd have never let me in the program. <laughs> he said, I I've known all my life, this is what I'm supposed to do, this is what I was created for. God is telling me right now to go do it. And there's a wall, you know, that goes up at Coronado Island across the top of Reed's first time every time. It means they completed every single evolution required of them the first time they tried it. He got on that wall, which was ridiculous. And no one ever knew about the knee. He couldn't even tape it because it would have given his secret away. Of course, every young guy wants to be a little Rambo. You know, when you grow up on a farm, you, you know, you want to play with all those cool weapons and all those cool ATVs and stuff like that. But the primary reason he wanted to do what he did was to take his place in history fighting for his country. Yeah, you know, because he loved this country so much. I looked back on it and I thought about, you know, our life and thought, you were prepared for everything by God. Man is taking responsibility for shooting down a U.S. helicopter. More than 30 people were killed, and there are reports this morning that most of them are U.S. Navy SEALs. Aaron was on the helicopter, and there were no survivors. Billy was on a trip 
He was away from home, 3,500 miles away from home to be specific. I don't know how to describe it. Just like, just like the oxygen had been sucked out of my lungs, you know, just everything went black. And I finally realized the phone was still in my hand. Tara took it from me and she just said, you're gonna be all right, Mom. You know, she came in and sat down beside me and, and was just quiet, you know, for a little bit. And, and all of a sudden she looked at me and she said, do you want me to call Dad? That was the first time it had dawned on me that I knew this horrible thing. It was going to change all of us forever. He didn't know. And I remember hearing her say, Daddy, he's dead. She hadn't called him Daddy in two decades, you know. Billy's flight got in. He had to take a red eye, and uh, we're on our way home. And Billy said, do you want to go to church? And I said, are you, are you serious? You, you want to? He goes, I, I would like to. I said, our family needs to worship. And we worshiped. In the time of the worst pain that I, I've ever had, and it was very comforted. And I'll never forget when we walked into church, they were playing the, how great they are. And I knew Aaron was there. lived in pain. His greatest strength was his tenacity, you know, and, and I remember him explaining to me, and I try to live like this now because he was absolutely right. He said, one thing I've learned is that pain is in your mind. He said, so I'll fix things when, when I've got a good time to fix them, but now's not the time. It's my turn to do the same. That's the way I see my life. The opportunities that I've had to share in my faith, to share my story, to share Aaron's story, don't make any sense outside of the fact that God has created the opportunities and allowed it to be because He had a plan for me too. And, and by January of 2017, God had placed me with my new mission. <laughs> I became part of American Warrior Initiative. Now I'm getting to share my story with realtors and with mortgage industry people and bankers. And I'm getting to talk to them about the sacrifice and to them about the honor and what they owe these people who come to them and say, yeah, I'm a United States veteran. I feel like after they hear my story, my hope is that they treat that person a lot differently. That people live lives worthy of that level of sacrifice. 